find out what's going on in the trends. And my next guest is David Moxie, Senior Director for Desktop Marketing. Oh, okay. yeah, we've been waiting okay, for you, so David. Okay, so finally, someone <laughs> in the desktop division. Okay. I'm just happy somebody was waiting. Now. Okay, <laughs> we've been talking about this. It's all over Twitter. Desktop. Why desktop? The desktop doesn't exist anymore. Why not call it, like, life? I mean, like, <laughs> life virtualization. I mean, because desktop reminds someone in a cubicle. They never go to the kid's soccer game. In the real world, people share with their friends. They're out working around. They're working on mobile. So it's any device. It's not the desktop. So our agenda is to change your title. We've got, we got to get rid of the word desktop, <laughs> and we're calling for it. So, But, I mean, seriously, the desktop is Windows. You guys have a relationship mm-hmm. with Microsoft. I get the idea. But reality is, is that it's just not about desktop. No, I think you guys are dead on. I mean, um, we've, we've looked at the desktop opportunity as a great way to, to you know, drive our business around virtualization. Um, if you ask a lot of folks at Citrix, we would say it's really all about the apps, right? And that's what we've been doing forever. Um, and it's kind of interesting that with, with VDI, that kind of you know, brought attention onto the desktop from a virtualization standpoint, and you could actually virtualize a, a desktop OS, and it was actually useful and you know, uh, a different kind of idea. So that was actually kind of cool, and I think what it's done is it's brought attention to what really matters, which is the apps, the, the data, the things you need to do your job, absolutely. I mean, the people who go to work every day who work on Windows and hopefully it's going to be virtualized, they have real lives. They go home, watch Netflix, they have an iPhone, they have an iPad. So, I mean, this is a nirvana of this, you know, the iPad, I mean, has changed your business. I mean, I can understand two years ago, desktop virtualization, cool. Yeah, but, I, think, I mean, I, the iPad is... I, I think you're dead on there again. I think the iPad was kind of the, the aha moment. It made it easier for more people to understand what a virtual desktop was and why it mattered. You know, and then once you can virtualize the desktop, you start looking at well, what matters? Apps, data. You know, how do I get it, get a hold of my apps? I want to use it for my iPhone, for my iPad. You know, doesn't matter where I'm at. So it's it's yeah. So it's, so it's it's this whole idea of. Uh, just being able to work and, and do what you need to do. Well, we're really excited about uh, covering Citrix because, obviously, love the open source angle from Zen. Mm-hmm. Citrix has been in the collaboration business for years. You guys have been pioneering that. And, you know, you know the only concern I have is you got a little legacy there, but, you know, but you guys are positioned well with your current strategy. And, and you got to look at the marketplace with virtualization, look at the markets like healthcare, education. I mean, uh, the end user environment, this consumerization of IT is really happening, one. And two, it's changing the world. I mean, so, mm-hmm. so tell us, share with us, your perspective on how you're looking at all these massive growth markets. I mean, healthcare alone, I mean, just the iPad, you walk around, you got access. But it's, it's everywhere, right? It's education, it's, it's life. You, you've probably hit the, the two or three of the top markets that Citrix has been in, you know, for our, our whole existence. Um, they've tended to be the, the industries that really take on the new technology and look at how they can, they can really, you know, take advantage of it, stretch it. Um, healthcare is probably with doctors and surgeons, and we've, we have, you know, examples of uh, the, the head of surgery telling the head of IT in, uh, in, in one of the hospitals we work with, you know, bringing an iPad and uh, you know, bringing an iPad into the office and saying, you know, make, make it this work. work. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> those guys are driving. Yeah. The and they're not the only ones. I mean, uh, so from a, from an industry standpoint, I wouldn't say that we're focused on any one particular industry. Um, there seem to be industries that that, that things are moving in all are, markets, are moving really. faster. Healthcare is one. Education, government. You know, certainly is, is is a big one as well, um, and finance. You know, the you know the uh, the yeah. financials for sure. So, but it, it's it's becoming pervasive. I mean, the, uh, the 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 customers I speak to, you know, six months ago, the questions we were getting were all about BYO. If you had asked me a year ago if anybody cared about BYO, nobody cared. But now everybody. It's because of the iPad. And, and all of the other devices that are coming out so behind the, it. So the consumer side, obviously, forcing the trend. We were talking earlier and commenting about you know, LinkedIn going public at a $10 billion value. It's a networking tool, okay? <laughs> I mean, come on. It's like your market cap's $15 billion. I mean, come on. Right. you got to go, oh, okay. It's a little bit of crazy bubble out there. But the consumer, people taste it. They can feel the user experience, and we're, you know, we're seeing this trend where they taste it. They taste the heroin. They taste the apps. <laughs> they go, hey, you know, this is a... So I want more of this. It's the mm-hmm. preferred user experience. Mm-hmm. So we heard that from you guys today around this, and you guys have a lot of work in that area at Citrix. Uh, so what's the big trends in, in the user experience side? Well, as I mean, the, the, the biggest thing we're seeing is just make it work on everything, which, which may sound really simple, 
but it's hard. I mean, the number of devices that are out, out there are just exploding. I mean, we talked about, uh, I think Mark talked about the, uh, whatever it was, 1,000 PCs, 137 smartphones, or whatever it was, some ridiculous number. Uh, thousands of Macs and PCs, 149 smartphones, 49, yeah, 37 right. different tablets, over 1 billion plus devices supported. Right, you look at the models and different types yeah. of devices that yeah, we yeah. support, it really is, is massive. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Big, big effort on our part to actually make it all work really well the way people expect. I mean, we saw a great example of the new user experience you know, today in, in Keynote. We got to make that work across well, all, I mean, the all the old desktop products. environment, the one that I cringe when I hear the word desktop, I'm reminded of software updates. And you have a lot of diverse models, okay, HP, you know, IBM, these guys. It's just new desktop. Mm -hmm. It's like, I got to make a change. With virtualization, you can actually automate all this really quickly, right? So, refresh of tech on the hardware side, mm -hmm. becomes a little bit easier. Super easy, because the, the image you're managing, whether it's a desktop OS, or the more importantly, the app images, you know, that, you know, at Citrix, you, know, you can update that in seconds, minutes, and have that effect and impact your entire company that quickly. So it's not like you wait six months, 12 months to do an SAP update, yeah. the apps are updated, you know, when they need to be, whether it's for security, new features, um, doesn't really matter, it just, just happens. So it's the same way you get your apps updated on your on your phone or we, on we your We just iPad. had Richard Scannell on, Dave and I were talking with him about virtualization. He quoted that 75% of all the enterprises are less than 70% Desktop, no, no yeah, uh, uh, virtualized. Virtual, but, server but again, virtualized. So, but, obviously, server virtualization has got a long way to go sure. still in enterprises. Where are we with desktop? Yeah, but again, this is where the, the nomenclature becomes really confusing, right? Yep. Because you know, to me, other than the word virtualization, server virtualization and desktop virtualization really don't have a lot in common. Um, is that fair? Uh, th there's some core technology that's, that's similar. I mean, the idea of separating you know, the, the software, if you will, from where it runs, the environment the that it runs The abstraction, but yeah, I mean, as far that, as a use case or it's, it's, a it's business case? Or it's totally different. I mean, uh, and, and the main reason is because there's people involved, right? Because if, there's cause humans if, if, that, if that weren't the case, then I would think VMware would be doing a lot more in desktop virtualization than, than it is. And you guys are dominant in that space. And a lot of people think, though, oh, I bought my server virtualization from company X, maybe I should buy my desktop virtualization from them too, but it's, it's apples and oranges. And it seems to me, I mean, you mentioned device support, but that's nothing new really for Citrix. I mean, you guys have had, I mean, you're all about access and have been for, well, it's, for, it's, for years. Well, it's, it's the device, but it's really about the experience that you get using your apps, using your desktops, wherever, whenever across the devices. That, what that do you mean by that? What, 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 it, uh, it, it means summarize if, that it, experience. It means if I have, uh, you know, take something simple like, um, you know, say just using, using PowerPoint or, a, you know, any type of office kind of app, and if, I'm, if I have to open it up and use it on an iPad from home yeah. or on vacation, I want it to come up fast, I want it to launch, I yeah, want yeah. graphics to work, I want it to happen. Um, whether I'm in the office using a Mac or a PC, it's the same thing. If I'm on a smartphone, you know, if, if I have to, you know, approve an expense report or something like that, if I get into an app, and it, I, I just want it to work. Uh, it shouldn't be choppy, the response time should be good, there should be great resolution. I sh if I want to watch video, I should be able to. I mean, that's what we, we say when it just works, and so it's it's a lot of basic stuff. You know? so you're I mean, Nokia, Nokia on, the, on the phone side, obviously, which has a relationship with Microsoft, and you guys have a deep relationship with Microsoft, had that problem with the browsers. Their phones had zillion browsers, and it really, it kind of screwed up their developer strategy, and they had a real backlash, and ended up causing the, sip, the, the ship to list, not fully sync, <laughs> Microsoft saved the ship, but, but that, that story's gone. But now you guys are in the same kind of boat. You are supporting a lot of diverse devices, and there's some, you know, there's some grumblings in the communities around feature parity across sure. the different devices, Win32 versus Linux, for example. Yep. So how are you guys handling that? And give us an update on, and, there, and the endpoints at Linux, a little bit lighter than Win32, we know that. Uh, any updates there, any kind of comment? Yeah, I mean, the main thing we've focused on is doing what our customers want us to do, right? <laughs> Smiling. And, and no, I, I mean, Come on, answer the question. Yeah, no, no, no doubt about it. I mean, the Windows devices have always been kind of dominant for Citrix and for our customers. So that's where we've, we've spent the bulk of our effort. I would say, you know, right now, looking for parity across Windows devices, both, uh, both PC and mobile. Um, parity now, actually, with, with iOS devices, you know, between the iPad and smartphone. And you can see... A lot of things we've learned and experimented with have been from the iPad. So the experience that we've developed and you see from the iPad is now permeating back across Windows devices, Mac devices, Android devices. So Linux will lag, basically. That's the way it always is, is pretty much. It's, it's, it's the usage. Yeah. We, we look for, yeah. for where the most demand is from. That's always been from. the case. Yeah. I mean, you go to the market leader, Windows, and you know, it was the old days. Remember Apple, Windows, and the developers were fighting in, the, in their late 80s, early 90s. Microsoft won the day because they beat Apple and developers all flocked there. So, so yeah. David, you were implying before, you know, sort of 
desktop virtualization going mainstream, but uh, it really hasn't gone mainstream. It's still relatively narrow use cases. Are you suggesting that it's sort of on the on the precipice? I mean, I know Gartner made a lot of noise a couple of years ago when it said, uh, I think it said 2010 maybe it was going to be the year, and maybe that's been pushed out a little bit, but um, what's... What's your take on that? I mean, are you con is your contention that it is now mainstream? Because I would suggest that it's it's maybe not as mainstream as is is that. But what's holding it back? Um, it still feels like it's relatively narrow use cases. How close are we? Well, I think from from the you know the the, the topic about mainstream, I and mean, we would we would argue that we're not we're not mainstream yet. Uh, we would say we're on a good ramp right now. Yeah. Uh, I think we're starting to see acceleration. I mean, everybody can debate where you get the mainstream, what percentage of the market. It's one of those things you know it when you're there, you know. So yeah. So I mean, uh, our our customers are you know are turning turning to desktop virtualization and really choosing from the different ways you can virtualize the desktop that you get with Zen Desktop, and and, and really embracing that and and are, are you know driving adoption pretty pretty rapidly. The things we have to do to make it you know go faster. Are really just to make the the experience better. I mean that that still ends up being being job one, uh, making it easier to manage, making it easier to use, support more devices. I mean, those are really the the key things that we hear over and over and over again. And um, you know we have that in sight. I mean we know what we have to do to to, to make that happen. And uh, you know we've got a pretty pretty active roadmap to you know from a device standpoint, user experience, HDX uh, standpoint, um, and as well to to uh, to get there. So. It, it's really a matter of uh, kind of uh, you know staying with the ramp we're on and um, and, and and continue to drive forward. Are, are you comfortable where we're at with 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 connectivity and the ubiquity of say for instance wireless networks? I mean, I got two devices here, and none of them have an Ethernet connection. We saw this morning in the demo, we had to go to hardwired. You know, it's a frustrating thing as a user. Um, is the, I, I presume that's somewhat of a barrier. Um, what do you see there? Yeah, I mean, I think when you start, you, you, you said it right, when you, when you start to centralize everything where you have to connect to it, then the network has to work, whether it's hardwired or, or wireless. So It's I tough for you to control that. Well, you can't. We just have to provide more tools to, um, you know, for businesses to, to be able to deal with that. So that's where you saw a huge emphasis you know, coming from us today around networking you know, with the NetScale or um, you know, Cloud Gateway mm -hmm. and the Cloud Bridge are really about extending you know, our networking expertise and networking you know, technologies you know, to work with cloud, so work with either personal cloud or, or public cloud you know, technologies. That's big, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's a really important element to make things go forward. Yeah, well one of the things that John and I have been impressed with is, and we come to events like this, there's a couple things we do is we evaluate the alignment of the messaging with what customers are actually saying, you know, and the test there is, are people actually talking about what you know, Templeton's talking about, and mm -hmm. that's very clear that mm -hmm. that message resonates. Uh, the other thing we look at is products, you know, meat on the bone, mm -hmm. and, and you announced a number of products today that are available in, you know, the relatively near-term time frame, June, October. Um, I, I, culturally, has that sort of been your typical uh, 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 MO, as you, you announce a little bit ahead of time and then deliver, and, you know, what's, what's your track record there? Is that is that a changing dynamic? No, it's pretty typical with Citrix. I mean, we, we tend to be uh, somewhat conservative and like to announce things when we have them pretty much in hand. Um, but we also see the opportunity for an event like this where we have certainly the media's attention, our customers' attention, uh, to really get our message out there as well as to get the message out on what's coming next so, so people can, uh, you know, can get ready and plan. Uh, because as much as everything's moving so fast and there's all, you know, uh, you, you know it's hard for IT to keep up. Uh, so they need to have, an, have a, you know, an idea of what's coming, knowing where you're going, so they can plan accordingly. So you see a lot of tech previews you know, coming out uh, at this event uh, for a number of the products for folks to try. Um, and then, as you said, a number of the products are going to be available you know, later in the year. People were clapping today during the product announcements. That's, that's somewhat, they weren't in applause signs either, were they? Uh, that, that, <laughs> you know, flashing applause signs? That, 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 I didn't see those. That, <laughs> the audience was, was genuinely clapping when Templeton this, announced the new this, product. This must be your first time at Synergy. It is. It was my it, first it, Synergy. It has to be because yeah. that happens quite often. It doesn't happen at a lot of other conferences. You're I mean, right. it, it kind of right. does when they play music. <laughs> yeah, you know right. what I mean? Like that, and, 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 that, and people go, like, okay, we're supposed that, to clap now. But this was really organic. Clapping. I mean, well, this, this, you know, one thing we've always heard, maybe you've, you've heard this or, or not, but the, the Citrix customer base is amazingly loyal. Um, some would argue maybe a little cultist at times. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they tend to respond pretty, pretty enthusiastically at events like this, Synergies, uh, and, and other events as well. They, they really look to see what's coming out, you know, technology-wise and product-wise, 
and you know they tell us what they want, and they usually get you know reasonably excited when they when they see things. Well, the pendulum out. is kind of s shifting for your customers, swinging for your customers as well. They've sort of been in the in the in serious pain, you know, managing desktop images mm -hmm. for for a number of years now, and you guys helped them with that pain, and and sort of in the aspirin business, if you will, but you're sort of. You're swinging to the vitamin business. I mean, a lot of the customers we're talking to here are talking about in business enablement and new business models and mobile changing their business. Mm -hmm. is, is, do you see that? That's been actually the, the characteristic of a lot of Citrus customers for a long time. I think what's happening, we talked about it a little bit before, I think the ability to virtualize a desktop and then with the iPad for people to see how, what you can do with that that's opening people's eyes to what you can do with Citrix uh, to a great extent. So a lot of things we've been doing with, uh, with hosted virtual desktops, you know, years past, been doing it for quite a bit, and stories about people, you know, bringing companies together, doing mergers and acquisitions, and having, you know, people up and running within a couple of days are, are, are not unusual with, with Citrix customers. Uh, some of the DR and business continuity stories of people, you know, uh, surviving uh, Katrina or surviving hurricanes in South Florida, where, where I'm at, where uh, you know w the office was without power for two, you know, for two weeks, but nobody knew that anything had changed because everybody was working remotely, working from home or you know, off site, just a normal part of the business. And those kind of examples with the Citrix customer base are pretty, pretty typical. Um, so I think now we're getting the opportunity to actually to get that message out to a broader audience, and it's. Uh, and it resonates. Like we, we were at SAP Sapphire last week. It was interesting to hear a lot of the customers and, of course, SAP talking about the notion, the metaphor of an app store for the enterprise. They're talking about a yeah. pretty legacy ERP-based company. Mm -hmm. You're certainly seeing that you know, in your customer base. Sure. Um, what role do you play in that? I mean, you guys kind of the glue in between that infrastructure. Do you actually see yourselves potentially becoming the platform for that app store or both? Well, we actually do a little bit of both. I mean, because with Citrix Online, we, we provide right. services. So we, we are on that side of the business. Um, and we've been pretty careful about what we do there. Get your toes in a lot of, a lot well, of, a lot I, of ponds. And, and as Mark said, I mean, the thing that that does is we understand what it takes to offer a service. Uh, we understand what it takes to be a 20, you know, 24 by 7, 360 network uh, uh, you know, provider with Netscale or for all the large internet properties. Same thing with Zen in, in the cloud. So we, we have a probably one of the richest and broadest, maybe most diverse set of technology uh, areas and expertise for a company our size, you know, probably in the industry. So um, um, we'll see what customers want and, and, and do what makes sense there. That's kind of been the, the norm where, where <laughs> as Mark said, it will we'll go where the customers want us to go. Mark did a great job in the keynote, and I want to really thank you for coming on. I know we gave you a hard time about the desktop thing, and uh, thanks for agreeing with us, by the way, on that and, and comment. But I agree, it's about the apps. Thanks for coming on inside theCUBE. Uh, you shared a lot of great knowledge, and folks out there on Twitter were pretty happy with some of the responses. So thanks so much for coming on board. Keep in great. touch, and we want to, uh, you know, talk to you more when you change the name. Want to be, the, <laughs> we want to be the first blog to break the news. SiliconAngle.com, the leading uh, coverage for tech innovation and emerging media. We're here. Citrix retires desktop yeah. virtualization. <laughs> Thank you, David. Right. Appreciate David it. David Moxie, thanks All for right. coming on the Cube. It was great you to have it. you. Got it.